Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of You Press Play Sports. I'm your host and business manager, Richard Pereira. Joining me today is lead photographer, Eston Parker, and staff writer, Kevin Garcia. Hey, guys, uh, what a great uh, afternoon it's been today. Yeah, lo lovely Tuesday afternoon. Uh, let's get it. I'm ready to talk FAU sports. You, you, you and me both, Kev. I, I, I'm ready. I've been been out the last two shows and i'm no longer in a place that's freezing so glad to be <laughs> back in the warmth yeah it's great to have you back Gaston. so to start off today we'll talk about we'll first talk about fu basketball uh, starting with the men's uh after taking a, a disappointing 70 to 51 defeat on the road in norfolk virginia against the old dominion monarchs on thursday they bounced back with a solid 74 69 victory against the charlotte 49ers in north carolina so guys, with having another road win in the books is pretty good for FAU as they're pretty much on track to clinch a winning record overall and in conference play. So what do you think of the men's recent performances this past week? So the, the game against Old Dominion, it was really like, it was a struggle on offense all around, all across the board. You know, like pretty much three of our best players and Elijah Martin, Greenlee, Michael Forrest, they were combined three of 32 from the field in that game like that you just can't win when you when you have a performance like that but thankfully they kicked out of the slump and and again charlotte won a hard fall game in mean, a big you know the ninth conference usa win so a program record i mean it's it, impressive and it's been an impressive season to say the least yeah and a really good response um beating charlotte away after the like you said kevin the really disappointing loss to old dominion um and it's you know, as we're entering the last two regular season games, um, they've already clinched the, at least for the regular season, a winning record. Um, and if they can beat, if they can win these next two games, um, they'll finish their conference record at 11 and seven because they're currently nine and seven. Um, so, you know, it, for now ending the, well, actually not ending, but, you know, going three and eight so far, away from home, I feel like has been their absolutely their biggest weakness. So um, at least they know what they got to improve on for next year. Yeah, we saw like uh, two different stories between the men when they faced Old Dominion and Charlotte. Against Old Dominion, they shot terribly, 27% from the field overall, which is which I think is their worst shooting percentage all, all season. And then they responded with a solid shooting effort, 46% against Charlotte. So it's pretty clear they learned from their mistakes against Old Dominion and responded with a much better effort on offense. Uh, they only had one player score in double figures, which was Vlad Golden against Old Dominion, 13 points, while everybody else struggled. And then against Charlotte, they had more players score over eight, like multiple players had over had eight points or more. So it's pretty clear that they responded very well and they're on track to have an uninning winning record this season so props to the dusty may who has pretty much been very consistent on in that respect like winning consecutive winning seasons is always a plus so as they wrap finish up conference play they face florida in national university the team down south on thursday on fiu's home court at 7 p.m which will be on espn plus and then they'll finish off conference play on saturday at home in the borough at 2 p.m. So what are we what are our expectations heading into these games in particular? Yeah, so um I think FAU should be able to win both of these games. Um FIU has struggled a lot in the conference. Of course they're currently five and eleven um, in conference play. Um and while we have been struggling away from um I think the win against Charlotte combined with the fact that, you know, this is a rivalry game will be really impactful. Um, and then obviously coming back to Boca, I, I think we absolutely have the advantage and we should win that game. Um, I don't see, like, I may be seeing us split it simply because we do struggle a lot from away from home, but um, I think that they'll put up a really good performance in both outings and it'll be a good way to end the regular season. Yeah, I think that the, the road matchup is really the one to really keep an eye on. 
like that, we need to see what this team is made of on the road. The road has been a struggle. We're well documented already. Um, I, I don't, I don't want to say the home game is a lock, but I, I think if in the front of the home crowd, last game of the season, I, I think it's as close to a lock as you can get. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it's going to be, it's really just key. Like the, the offensive struggles that we saw this past week, particularly against old dominion. So hopefully those have been addressed with in film and, you know, we'll see what, what they come up with next, uh, next time out. Yeah, definitely. And as we head on to the women's side of things, um, losing is still happening. They are currently riding a nine game losing streak and they had disappointing losses against old dominion and Charlotte, uh, against all the they lost 70 to 50, 55. And on Saturday, a 29-point defeat, 76-47 uh, at home. Both games at home, actually. So disappointing losses overall. And and it would, would the pretty much uh, expectations being that they'll play their last conference games and then their first-round game in the tournament. How should the women's, like, try to finish it out? Um. I mean, the best they can do is pick up a win, it, it, you know, but um, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen at home. I, I strongly doubt it's going to take place um, down at FIU. Um, they, it, th their starters have got to carry the team. I mean, it, th they have basically no depth um, beyond the starting five. Um, they need to, make sure that Amber Gaston gets enough help in, um, inside and in the paint. Um, because when Amber's out, it's a really, it's, it's not a very big lineup. Um, and just, get, I don't know, just get some momentum rolling. I mean, against Charlotte, um, the other day, they, they may have been one of their most forgettable performances of the season. I mean, they only shot 24% from the field. Um, they made, they actually made um, more, more shots from the free throw line, or excuse me, they tied. They got just as many shots from the free throw line as they did shots from the field. Actually, you're right. They did make the more, like more shots from the free throw line, 15 to 14. Oh, so. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it's it's so it, you, they got to shoot. Um, it, at least they're a good free throw team. If they get to the line, it'll be um, – it'll help us out. But I just want to, you know, for the sake of the seniors at this point, like just get a win. Um, just end it on a good note. So. Absolutely. Yeah, I think that the game tomorrow is a key. They need a big win. I mean, really come out playing strong. Because that game against Charlotte, there was just a lack of effort, you know, all across the board. And I think that's the key for Wednesday, just come out playing stronger, hungrier. Because we've seen, like, throughout this losing streak, we've seen games, like, when they played um, when they played Western Kentucky and Charlotte, it was a close game. Those are close games. But there's been some games here where they're just getting blown out. Um, I really, yeah, I think it's all effort-based at this point. Yeah, definitely. Um, with the offense being uh, second to last in Conference USA, they have to rely on that on their defense to actually keep the game as close as they possibly can. And as we've seen against the game in the games against Old the Old Dominion and Charlotte, it, it's just been very tough for them, especially if they can't score consistently and their shooting is very uh, on and off. And as they close conference play against FIU as well, uh, they play they host FIU their last home game of the season on Wednesday at 6 p.m. And they play their last game of conference play on Saturday, March 5th at noon. And then after that, it's conference tournament, and we'll see how that plays out uh, next week. Um, and as we move, uh, moving on from FU basketball, we have FU baseball to start off, to bring this episode on a better note. Uh, they played three games against the University of Delaware, and they won the, the, the series against them. Uh, winning two of those three games. And after losing the first game on Friday, they bounced back to win the rest of the series on Saturday and Sunday. So, Essen, uh, what do you t take from the team's performance this past week? Um, their weekend starters are really efficient on the mound, and they've been doing a very good job of limiting 
um, the appearances out of the bullpen, um, which isn't to, you know, say that our bullpen isn't any good. I, I think that they're pretty solid and have improved from last season. Um, but I think the, again, the, the pitching that we've seen, especially this past weekend was, um, was excellent. Um, on Saturday against Delaware, Hunter Cooley put in a really good outing, um, seven innings, only, I believe, allowed two runs, um, only, only had one walk, um, just a really, like, it, you know, put, um, he put his pitches in the right spot, and as Coach McCormack said on Saturday, he's amazing, you know, um, he's probably the best pitcher that we have, arguably the best player, so getting, making sure that his starts turn into victories are important. Um, and on Sunday of that series, um, uh, when Rivera was up on the mound, um, he had a pretty strong outing. Um, and even the guys that came out of the bullpen, Drumheller, Visconti, and uh, Martzolf, all had really good games. So um, the bats have been popping up when they need to. Um, but even then, like in the Saturday game, they only got in the one inning where they got six runs, they're really efficient on the mound. They have excellent plate vision where I think they got three walks that inning from walks or three runs from walks alone. So um, just being able to command the plate, both offensively and defensively has been a, it's, it's been really encouraging, especially coming into this week. And as we see uh, FU baseball progress through the season, their offense has been really consistent. Against Delaware, they they had five or more runs in all three games of the series. So that offense is consistent. What matters is the defensive side of things, and especially pitching, where they lost eight five in the in the series opener, and then it progressively got better as the series went on. Only conceding three in Saturday and just one on Sunday. So as long as the team can uh, have find a cons- find a rhythm defensively, they should be good to go for, as the season goes on. And at the time of this recording, which is on a Tuesday, uh, at six thirty today, they will take on the University of Mi- the University of Michigan Wolverines <laughs> at home, and then tomorrow they take on uh, Michigan again at six thirty as well. So pretty big games. And then after Michigan, they take on Fordham for a three-game set from March four to six. Uh, what do you think uh, the team should, how the team should do in those five games? I mean, against Michigan, um, I'm curious to see if it might be. Um, I, I'm gonna go with it being a split. Um, I, I, I'm because during the week. I mean, we saw it against uh, the University of Miami last week, and we saw it on opening day against Minnesota. Um, we usually struggle uh, for the first game of every series. I think we also lost the first game to Delaware. So um, in terms of opening a series, we've struggled a bit. But I think assuming that we do lose the first one, we'll rebound. But also Michigan is – riding a four game winning streak they put up six they put up a combined 29 runs against FIU in their in in two games so um to say Michigan is uh rolling right now is an understatement so limiting that offense will be crucial yeah, they're, they're dominant on offense right as of right now. But, yeah, I mean, we have Hunter Cooley going on Wednesday. So we'll see if he can stop that offense. It's going to be it's gonna be a, a tough two-game series against Michigan, that's for sure. I mean, at least it's at home. It would be a different story on the road. But, yeah, we'll see, what, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, same here. And that will conclude our section with FU Sports. We head on to the national sports level. And for that only topic for today is NBA basketball. And uh, Philadelphia recently recently played two games with their new duo of Joel Embiid and James Harden against the Timberwolves and Knicks. 
Uh, sorry, Kevin, because <laughs> they played a game against the Knicks on ABC, which was nationally televised. And even though New York was competitive for three quarters, it completely fell apart in the fourth quarter as Harden and Embiid just went off. And Embiid had a very good highlight in the fourth by throwing down a two-hander <laughs> on the fast break, which was very good. So what, do you, what are our uh, initial thoughts on the Harden and Embiid duo? Hey, they're in the honeymoon phase right now. We got to enjoy it while it's, while it's good but before Harden gets mad. Like, who knows what's going to happen? Maybe, like, like some trainer won't shake James Harden's hand before a game and he'll get mad and want to leave Philly. Who knows? So, Got to enjoy it while it's good. Uh, I mean, that was um, – that. I, I think that was spot on. I'm going to – I'm also going to wait for um, Doc Rivers to make another fumble yeah. of a coaching decision in the playoffs. I can't, I can't wait for that. Um, maybe it'll be against the Heat to just make things even better. Um, but I, uh, I mean, it's, they're fun to watch right now. Um, and I'm sure Philly fans love seeing a guy that can shoot from three. That's not Seth Curry. So. But yeah, uh, that Embiid and Harden duo, it looks pretty dangerous right now. And then you top it off with Tyrese Maxey. <laughs> Who has been very good for the for the Sixers this season and might be in the men- and might be in the running for most improved player of the year. So yeah. And then you top and then you have Matisse Thybul, who is a defensive <laughs> bulldog for Philly. And <laughs> yeah, Philly is a strong team on paper, very strong, especially on defense. And then you look at offense with Harden and Embiid. Like it's gonna be very hard to stop them unless they unless you have the perfect matchup to counter them with. So, and then we look at the Los Angeles Lakers, who oh played the New Orleans Pelicans on mm. ESPN on Sunday, and we had a memorable <laughs> game for the worst of the Lakers, suffering an embarrassing blowout, and then they topped it off with DeAndre Jordan being on the fast break and throwing a, a pass that went way out of bounds, and it resulted in him getting cut the next day. <laughs> so... It's been very tough for the Lakers. I know it, it has been very tough. Like they're still in the same playoff playing spot at like number nine, just above the New Orleans Pelicans. Oh uh, yeah, it's not, it's just it's just very rough to to look at right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's rough. The Pelicans are on a roll, man. They won what like six in a row, De- destroying the Lakers on Sunday night. That's crazy. I never thought I'd see the day that, that like a, a Zionless Pelicans team blows out the Lakers. I don't know what's going on in the NBA. I, I don't know. The Le- LeBron's going to, maybe LeBron's going to get traded. Who knows? That's like the big topic that everybody's talking about on mainstream media. So I mean, that, that would really change up the landscape. It, it is really shocking to see how bad the Lakers are. Yeah. Um, because it, it really looked like they were assembling another super team at the beginning of the season. And um uh you know they're at least they're playing for the play-in spot they're a play maybe they'll be a playoff team go off um i will say though it's the the timberwolves are kind of sneaking in a bit um yeah. they did beat the Cavs last night and or i think it was last night um yeah, was last there's, night. Some inter- there's some interesting games that and the the heat comfortably beating the bulls let's go heat um gonna show a bit of homerism here but yeah i mean all-star weekend was fun and we continued to get non-stop entertainment from the league it is amazing you love to see it yeah and to clarify the pelicans are not on a six game winning streak they won two straight which includes the win against lakers the only team in the west that has a six game winning streak is the denver nuggets and they're still without jamal murray and michael porter jr who have gotten updates that they are on track to return this season especially michael porter jr so denver is uh is gonna look very is gonna look much better uh, once this season uh, starts getting to a close drawing to a close so denver is looking pretty strong nikola Jokic is still embarrassing team with his insane passes and recently uh john morant uh yesterday 
dropped 52 points on the San Antonio Spurs as he led the Grizzlies to victory as they're still standing strong as the third best team in the West. So John Morant, uh, I think he should be in the conversation for MVP. Uh, what do you guys think? Absolutely. I agree. 100%. He's a human highlight reel. Like that, that game last night, it was just incredible. All the highlights from, from dunking on uh, Jacob Pertle to the, the buzzer beater to, to the 52 points. The, the, what did he get? Like a 40 foot three from the logo? Like he's just, he's doing it all. So, I mean, to, to shoot for 22 of 30 against the, Spur- against the Spurs and then against the Bulls, he went dropping 46. Yep. I mean, th- this dude does not stop. He's a machine. <laughs> yeah, he might, he's in the conversation for best point guard in the league. It's like it's he's right at the top of the conversation. He's he's outperforming Dame and and Luca and all these other guys that you would think as the top point guards. Well, yeah. Um, <laughs> well, yeah. But John Moran has done very well this season. He's getting the Grizzlies to phenomenal heights that than what he would have thought at the start of the season. And it's just been great to see. And as you look at the West, three teams already have 40 or more wins, which is the Phoenix Suns, the War- the Golden State Warriors, and, of course, the Grizzlies. So it's been pretty convincing that the West has its clear-cut contenders that could make deep runs to possibly making the NBA Finals. And the East can- continuing to stay competitive with just one team having 40 or more wins, which is the Miami Heat, of course. With the Bulls uh, just on the outside, just needs one more win to do so. And with Philly, just three wins away from doing that. And everybody else in the playoff spot, at least, just needing four more wins. So it's just been a tight competition in the Eastern Conference. And it's just been great to see the, the surprising teams, especially with the Cleveland Cavaliers, the Minnesota Timberwolves, both fighting for, uh, at the very least, a playoff spot. Or... Uh, with the best assurances, a playing spot. So it's just been great to see those performances all around. And let's see, let's hope for a great end to the regular season. And with that, that'll be it for this episode of You Press Play Sports. Make sure to hit like and subscribe. Click the bell to keep up with notifications from us. Also be sure to go on upressonline.com to keep up with news, sports, and more content alike. To follow us on Twitter, it's for me, at rich 26 Pereira. For Eston at Eston Parker and for Kevin at Kevin Gar 658. Thanks for watching, guys, and have a great day. <laughs>